Hi everybody, welcome back to Hellballs Limited Game Dev Tycoon and Brian, who's all by himself in this gigantic office now that we bought uh, last episode. Great. Brian has been making many, many games. He is the John Carmack of Hellballs Limited. Uh, he can see binary scrolling in front of his very eyes at all times, and he's like a great mathematician and a designer and whatever. Well, maybe not so much a designer. Um, do we want to train him? Like, we could do staff management training, which we have to do, actually. So let's do that. I don't know if we get any research points for doing this. But anyway, Brian is going to learn quickly how to deal with staff. All of the ins and outs of staff management. Like, you know, he's going to be an equal opportunity employer. He's going to be able to deal with people when they have, like, a family bereavement. He's going to know how to deal with people when they start... Uh, bringing their own poop into the office and microwaving it. He's going to know how to deal with all sorts of different people. It's going to be great. Um, today, the new game platform, Super TES by Ninvento, has been released. Oh my god, we are in the 16-bit era already. Um, and all we've been doing is making crampy romance simulators, like kissing lessons and barfing lessons. <laughs> well done, you've successfully completed your management course. You're now able to hire your very first employee to get started close this minute. Yeah, okay, great. Um, all right, what are we looking for then? We are looking for, before you can hire someone, you have to advertise the open position. Set an advertising budget and decide how you want to test your applicants. Great, a high budget will increase the number of applicants and the different tests will help find people with the right balance of design and technology skills. Okay, so Brian is going to be our math nerd guy right he is going to be doing all of the complex algorithms and like the programming and stuff like that so what we would really like is somebody who is good at like um i think game demo is sort of like a like a in between super nerd and design guy and then showreel is like heavily heavily design guy right so let's go for the polar opposite of brian and let's get some showreels in and let's go for a design guy what's our budget here our budget, we have 2.2. You know what? We're only going to sacrifice 200K for this and start looking. And really, we're going to look for somebody who is cheap. And then we're going to train them from the ground up and turn them into a superstar. It's going to be great. All right, let's start looking. Brian has put an ad in the paper. It seems that Hellballs Limited has recently moved into an office in a well-known technology park and is now searching for employees. This is news, apparently. The company, which is known for, known for games such as Tim in Time and Marv's Revenge has reportedly operated out of a garage until now. That's right. One of the many fans of Tim in Time commented, I can't believe that they didn't even have a proper office until now and that those games were created by only one person. I am really looking forward to their future games. Well, <laughs> I mean, that could have been the best years of Hellballs Limited. I mean, whatever comes out of this office could just be like a steaming pile of trash. I have no idea. The search for the open position is complete. You can now review the list of applicants and hire someone for this position. Great. Don't forget that you can always train your employees to improve their skills. Perfect. All right. So we have Jaden Griffith, which is a Jaden. I, I don't understand the name Jaden. What is it meant to be? Is it like, uh, is, is it like some sort of hybrid of uh, Jason and uh something that <laughs> dennis i guess maybe it's it's like jason and dennis combined I, I i don't understand it anyway he wants 11k per month which is is i mean it's okay 11k per month's not too bad he is a uh experienced he's not an experienced sorry his experience is level one it's not very good he's good at design not so good at technology and he has decent enough speed and research Next, Anita Bowman, who has much better design. She's experienced. She's a level two, uh, but she's asking for 18K per month, which is a lot, in my opinion. Um, her speed and research aren't really there either, um, but she's definitely a potential candidate. And we have Jeremiah Morales, who has lots of design. Okay, his speed is not too bad. He's level two as well. Uh, his research is not the greatest, and he's looking for 18k per month. Jeremiah Morales, Anita Bowman, and Jaden Griffith. 
I mean, Anita has 312 design. Jeremiah has 300. Jaden only has 173, but we can train him. But it's going to cost us research points. But it's going to be cheaper in the long run because it's only 11k per month. He's not going to ask for a raise for like ever. I mean, he's just going to be pleased that we're finally giving him a job. Uh, well, whilst these two might be like, no, this job sucks. I, I'm out of here. I'm going to start bringing my poop in the office and microwaving it or, you know, just invent bereavements or something. And then Brian will have to like step out of the matrix all the time and deal with Anita and Jeremiah uh, because they're big divas. But Jaden Griffith is going to work really hard. He used to be like a, I don't know, like a, a concrete pourer or something. And uh, he's just got this uh, fantastic work ethic. Uh, he's really keen, he wants to get in here, he's faster, and he's uh, better at research than the other two, but his design skills aren't amazing and he's level 1. You know what, Jaden? You're hired, motherfucker. That's right. Congratulations on your first hire. New employees have to settle in before they become fully effective when a character is not fully efficient, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. It's usually a good idea to give your new staff a welcome training. All right, we'll do that, Jaden. And we can also research medium games. Okay. Let us do staff welcoming training. It's going to cost us 10 grand to do that. But at least he's going to know what the rules are. We don't want like any incidents with the microwaves. Try to keep the family bereavements down a bit. And let's just focus on making some rip-roaring games together uh, as a company. Uh, we're going to hit some new milestones here for sure. It's going to be great. Anyway, we're low on everything. We're low on research points. Um, we could really do with boosting that up. We need to get some money back in the coffers. Uh, let us consult our... We can't even. What do we have to do now? We have to train? Do we have to train again? I don't want to train again. For best results, your staff... Train your staff regularly. Yeah, yeah. We know about all of this. You know what? I just want to make a game. Um, we can spend some research points, but we don't have enough research points. Uh, so we can't. And then uh, we can also fire Jaden if we want to train him or, or do some research. Or... We could just click in the center here, which I totally forgot to do, and start developing a game. Excellent. Okay, let's consult our history. The last game that we made was Marv's Revenge. It got pretty good reviews. It was a vampire action game for the PC. I didn't make a ton of money, but it made enough money, and we learned some lessons from it. Uh, and then we had barfing lessons, kissing lessons, and then, of course, our number one blockbuster surprise hit, Tim in Time. Uh, a story about... Um, a young man named Tim who goes back in time and has zany adventures. And that's it. That's all that happens in the game. It's crazy. Dracula's baby was a piece of shit and that happened before. All right. Anyway, uh, it looks like the um, Sony company, uh, in, in this case, Vonny, is going to release the PlayStation pretty soon. But before that, they're going to work together with Ninvento to uh, produce it together. And then they're going to decide they don't want to do that. And then they're just going to release the PlayStation and do better than Nintendo ultimately. At least that's where we're at now. And now it's the play system and the entertainment conference. Things have turned sour. Um, and now they're going with a different partner. But they're probably just going to work on their own. And that'll be the end of the play system. But the play system's coming out anyway. All right. It's time to develop a new game. What's it going to be? We are going to... Ah, we got all these new topics. We could do something new. Let's do, like, something... Something new. Something nice. Let us put... Um, Jaden to the test. Let us make a fantasy RPG on the PC. Okay. Um, it might work. And let's make it for everyone. Okay. We're going to use the RPG or V2. And we're going to call it Mana Boys. Okay. I mean, this is a great combo as well, and we've done it before, but I mean, Fantasy RPG is just a great combo. And we could try something else. We could try a time travel RPG. That might be good. Uh, we could try a sci-fi RPG would probably work as well. Um, in that case, we could call this one um, Space Boys. Okay. The sci-fi RPG about two boys in space doing stuff. And then it's like a sandbox game, right? But you you role play in, in this space sandbox. You can go around in your spaceship and just do stuff. It's going to be great. All right, perfect. 2D graphics V2. Uh, that's all we have right now. We're going to have to get some research points so that we can get some better stuff and make a new engine. Um, Brian's going to probably just do that as like a solo act in his spare time. 
He doesn't talk to anybody uh, in the office, and everybody thinks he's really weird. And then one day he just turns up. He's like, "Hey guys, I uh, made a new engine uh, last night. Just, uh, just, just had the idea to do it." And then uh, it's like the best engine you've ever seen. All right, perfect. We're ready to go. Space Boys, uh, a sci-fi RPG. Do we need stories and quests? Yes. Do we need gameplay? A little bit. Do we need engine? No. Brian's gonna be disappointed. We're gonna have game tutorials, save game functionality, and a linear story in this, and it's gonna be fantastic. All right, development stage one of Space Boys. Let's do it. Jaden, we're really looking for some input from you here. I know you're tired. I know you're just getting accustomed to working here, but one design ball and one research ball for stage one is not gonna cut it. You're gonna have to up your game big time. Dialogues, yes. Level design, kinda. Artificial intelligence, no way, never. This is Brian's worst type of game, an RPG game. And he, you know, he designed the engine for the RPG or V2, but he didn't want to because he doesn't want to make RPG games. He wants to make math puzzle games, ideally. But there's no market for that, sadly, so we're not going to do it. Uh, in two months, the TES will be taken off the market. We have developed approximately zero games for that system. Sadly, we're working on PC titles uh, with uh, Jaden, our new guy. All right, 2D graphics v2, perfect. Basic sounds for 5K, excellent. We are going to go heavy on the world design. Uh, we're going to go pretty heavy on the graphics, and we're not going to worry too much about sound. Um, and that's going to be development stage three for Space Boys, a sandbox RPG about boys in space. It was Jaden's idea, okay? He's the new design guy. Brian just, like, goes along with it and says, yeah, whatever. Just, like, let me do some algorithms or whatever. All right, we got some bugs that we need to iron out. We got 25 design, which is, like, a new milestone for um, Hellballs Limited. Brian was never able to achieve that on his own. And look at this. He's still adding design balls to it. Perfect. And, crucially, 24 research points. Which is pretty good. Excellent. We got a new topic and a new combo for sci-fi RPG, Space Boys in Space. Um, I mean, we could have a, a sequel later, which is like Planet Boys after they're done in space. Maybe they land on a planet and then we just like have an RPG there as well. Jaden is slowly leveling up. Brian has just hit level three. Wow. And level design has hit level three as well. That's going to be good for the company. All right, let's, re re let's release it. We also have new research for a level editor available. Perfect. All right. Oh, that was quick. The first reviews for our newly released game, Space Boys, has come in. Oh, God. It's a solid 10. Come on. It has to be. Everyone loves it. Perfect. Okay, great. Everyone loves it except for Informed Gamer. Sci-fi and RPG is a great combination. And not so much Game Heroes. Played it for days. Let's get another 10. Oh, best of its kind. Jaden, you're the best. I mean, I'm sorry. If your name is Jaden and I said I thought your name was weird, I take it all back. This guy, this kid is fantastic. Holy shit. I mean, and he costs nothing as well. Like, 11k per month? That's nuts. Like, we probably play the guy, pay the guy who cleans the toilets more than that. I don't think anyone cleans the toilets around here. Maybe that Brian will, like, make a robot to do that or something. All right, anyway, really good scores. <laughs> really, really good. The TES is gone. Perfect. All right, what made that tick? Jaden, you're on generating a game report for Space Boys, the sci-fi RPG which scored 9.25 and is going to make us lots of money in our new office. It's going to be fantastic. Look at this. We sold like over 50k units in its first week. This is another one that's just going to make us millions, I think. This is crazy. Our post-release analysis of Space Boys is complete, and we got the following results. Sci-fi and RPG is a great combination. Artificial intelligence seems to not be very important for this type of game. We guessed that. Graphics seems to be quite important for this type of game. We got that too. Platform genre match is good. Platform audience match is also good. We have some additional insights. Jaden Griffith is still new to the team. A few more games, and the team will have higher potential. Oh man, that's fantastic. Look at all this money. We're back up to like 2.5 million. The latest game by Hellbows Limited has received very positive reviews overall. Star Games gave it a 10 saying everyone loves it. If Hellbows Limited continues to innovate like this, they will might become a new fan favorite. Perfect. We have 5.8k fans and growing. Look at this. It's just coming. It's just coming in. The money just keeps rolling in. It's crazy. 
All right. Um, we want to do some research. We're going to get Brian to do the research because he's like uh, that way inclined, I guess. We really need marketing. Um, but we could do with getting um, some other stuff. Medium games, I don't know if we're ready for yet. We ideally probably need another member of staff before we start doing medium games. Um, we could do level design gameplay, better user experience. We could get 3D graphics V1. It's only going to cost us 15 research points and 40 grand. We might as well start working on that one, actually. It's a good one. And then maybe we can also get level editor and then make a new engine. Jaden will love working on an engine with Brian. I have this, I have a feeling that Jaden is kind of like the, the spice uh, that Brian needs in his life. Like Jaden is more outgoing and stuff. Oh, look at that, we're ready already. Okay, let's go for level editor because we have the research points. No training, sadly, uh, unless we do like some contract work or something uh, because we only have three research points left. Space Boys is now off the market. It sold 198,333 units and it generated a whopping sum of 1.3 million in sales. Holy crap. Who would have thought a game called Space Boys would do so well? I mean, it's really good. Strong audience, young. We need to make a game for youngins. All right, that'll be our next task. Uh, we'll make a game and we'll capitalize on this and then we'll do the... Um, engine after that. All right, let's get on it quickly, Jaden. All right, let us make a, oh, here we go. Uh, we're going to make a music, a casual music game for the Gameling, which still has 21% market share. Or should we do the Venegear? I don't want to do the Venegear at all, actually. Uh, I think this is going to work really well on the Gameling for young people. And we're going to use the RPG or V2. And we're going to call it this one, um, kids. Please dance. <laughs> there, it fits. Perfect. So it's like a message as well. It's it's a it's an instructional game on how to dance better, but also it's sort of like pleading with kids who are getting like really fat and lazy to please just stand up and do some dancing for goodness sake. Come on, you know, work out a little bit while you're having your time on the game link doing some gaming and stuff. All right, so it's like a, it's like a multi-tiered message. 2D graphics V2, probably aren't gonna cut it for much longer, but we'll just see. Anyway, kids, please dance. <laughs> Here it comes. It's a music casual game. <laughs> I mean, I guess we probably want a lot of gameplay, probably not mu so much on the stories and quests, and then engine. I mean, we made a casual game not long ago, and I can't remember what sliders I used. Anyway, we're going to leave all of the bells and whistles in. We want to have like a linear story, which is just going to be like a tutorial to say like, this is how you do the electric slide. You know, this is how you do the worm for your girlfriend on your first prom date, that kind of shit. Also save game so that if you screw up the worm on your first date with the with the prom date, you can uh, retry again after. And then that fits in with game tutorials. So we'll go with that. Jaden is all on board with this. He's going to design the shit out of Kids Please Dance. Brian, once again, is just sort of thinking, what the fuck is this? You know, when are we going to do like a math problem solver game? Or is there some way that I can just make complex algorithms all day and not think about games? Dialogues we don't need. Let's go heavy on the level design and let's get a bit of AI in there too. Finally, Brian is like, oh, great. Okay, I'm going to design some AI. The music instructor is going to be capable of recognizing a frown on your face through the built-in camera on the game link, and he's going to be able to respond uh, to that. That's something Brian is unable to do as a human being himself, but he's going to program something that is capable of doing that. So that's going to be crazy. Uh, let's go heavy on the wor on the world design. It's a music game, so let's go heavy on the sound. And then, uh, well, not so heavy on the sound. And graphics, well, we kind of need to, like, bump this up a little bit because it's 2D graphics V2. So we'll bump it up to, like, this, I guess. Uh, but this does seem to be quite important. Uh, world design, we're not sure, actually, if it is important or not. You know what? I don't think world design is going to be important. I'm going to say... Let's go heavy on the graphics and not so much on the sound and just like fuck the world design basically. Uh, because who needs a world design in a casual music game called Kids Please Dance? I don't think you need it. Anyway, here we go. We got to hit some milestones here and we got some bugs to iron out too. 
Jaden, we're going to give you some training after this one. But look at this. The strong audience of Young is what's going to get it for us. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, perfect. I don't think we hit any milestones. We did get a lot of research points from that, though. We did hit a milestone. Look at that. Brian really, like, burned the night oil, stayed up, and he got a new technological record for that um, frown recognition software that he put into the game. Perfect. All right, Jaden Griffin is still level one. Let's release the game. We have some new research available as well. Simple cutscenes, better dialogues, and open world as well. All good stuff that will uh, be nice to have in our new engine. First reviews for our newly released game, Kids Please Dance, came in. Oh, here we go. I see tens. I see high scores. Yeah. Can't wait for the sequel. There may never be a sequel, Star Games. I'm sorry to say this to you. Played it for days. Informed Gamer. That's great. It was only an eight, though. Could have been a nine as well. Good game. Game Hero. Gave it a measly seven. And more, please, all games. Holy shit. I mean, we've done it again. We got really high scores. We're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> oh, my God. Kids, please dance for the gameling. It's a surprise hit. Holy shit. All right. How many units are we going to sell in the first... Not as many as I would have thought, given that the strong audience of Young uh, is is in vogue right now. From time to time, your employees need to recharge their batteries and go on vacation. I hope you're not implying that Jaden Griffith needs to go on vacation. He's just fucking started, okay? We're making like a game a day here. He does not need to go on vacation just yet. He does. Look, it's emptying out a little bit. All right, before you go on vacation, though, you're going to generate the game report. We want to see what kids... Please Dance, that scored 8.25 on the Richter scale uh, and was a music casual game for the gameling, uh, did to make it get that high score. This is uh, incredible. All right. In the meantime, um, do we have any research that we would like to do? Let us do some research on, potentially, um, something to do with sound. And then we're going to shove that into the new engine and start making some more games. All right. Start that research. We'll do some training on Jaden. He can go off on his um, vacation or whatever he wants to do. Like, he probably just wants to go to, like, Crete or something. That seems like a Jaden thing to do. Our post-release analysis of Kids Please Dance is complete. And we got the following results. Music and casual is a great combination. We figured it would be. Gameplay seems to be very important for this type of game. I think we maxed it. Platform genre match. Gameling Casual is great, and Platform Audience Match, Gameling Young, is great. All right, we know that the Gameling is going to be the key to making kids' games. We have some additional insights. Jane Griffith is still new. Maybe he's no longer considered new after he goes on his first vacation on day three of being employed by us. I mean, what the fuck? He's going to do some training first. All right, you are a designer, so you are going to do game design for pirates at the cost of five roleplay points and 15 kroners. Uh, and then the CR point, I have no idea what that stands for. Anyway, hop to it, Jaden. Um, and we're gonna start planning. Boss, it seems that quite a few players use illegal copies of Kids Please Dance. How? I managed to identify some of them. Good job, Jaden. On day three of you being employed, you've already... Um, he's, he's put in a request for a holiday, which is a big no-no. Uh, but he found some pirates using illegal copies of our hit game, Kids Please Dance, which is a good thing. Um, and he's given me some really good options here. We could either sue them to defend our copyright or send them warnings to ask them to stop. What do we want to do? I think suing um, players is not the best. So let's just warn them, okay? And then if they keep doing it, then trust me, we're going to sue them. Uh, we're going to get Brian to write an algorithm to sue everybody and make a lot of money that way. It's going to be good. All right, Jaden, right away. Oh, please don't let that interfere with your design training. See, look, he's just like doing some training on how to design games better. Uh, game convention, dear Hellballs Limited. We have followed your progress in uh, recent years and would like to extend this formal invitation to participate in the biggest game convention on the planet. Games, games, games. Also known as G3. <laughs> Sweet. Great. By having your own company booth at G3, you can gain a lot of fans and hype for your games, and we think our audience would love to see you there. We'll contact you yearly with booth options. Hope to see you at G3, the G3 committee. I've never been good at timing my releases around G3 or after or whatever. I just sort of do what I want to, 
get a booth at G3 and sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. Maybe there's a better way of doing it. I have no idea. Hellballs Limited has recently sent warnings to several players using illegal copies of their game. Kids, please dance. We should make a game called Kids, please don't use illegal copies of our software. Piracy is an increasingly big problem in the industry. Some companies invest a lot of money and effort to fight piracy, while others argue that it's better to take a more relaxed approach and invest in better games instead. You can see both sides, right? We have gained 279 fans for our stance on piracy, which was to issue warnings. All right, kids, please dance now off the market. It sold 84,972 copies, uh, and it generated 594,839 sales. It wasn't the big hit that I thought it was gonna be. I thought we'd get like another million out of it, but we are up to three million, which is a good thing. Right, okay, we have research points, uh, but not enough. We're gonna train, we're gonna train Brian who has 300 in technology um, in code incomplete, which hopefully should give him more technology score, I think. Yes, it does. Look, it gives him a little bit of design as well, which is not a terrible thing. But we're going to go heavy on the technology for Brian. He's all about the zeros and the ones. And we are going to send Jaden Griffith away on vacation. It's his fourth day of work, um, but he's wants to go to Crete and meet up with some old friends from school or something like that. It seems that the market is normalized again with no particular strong trends at the moment. We really didn't capitalize on the previous strong trend, which is uh, sad, but there you go. We're ready to create a new custom engine with the new stuff that we have. We're going to add 3D Graphics V1 and we're going to remove 2D Graphics V2 because we don't need it. We're going for just 3D Graphics V1. It's going to be the way to go. And we're also going to add a level editor and mono sound uh, into the mix as well. Because why not, right? And we're going to call this one uh, Brian's Hope. And that's because uh, Brian is going to be pretty much making the engine. Because he's like the, the nerd of the outfit. And... Um, He's hopeful that we'll move away from RPG games and move into something a bit more challenging for him. Like stuff that's heavy on the AI and stuff like that. So fine, let's do it. We're gonna create it. Brian's Hope V1, a custom game engine that just Brian himself has started working on, but no, Jaden Griffith has returned from Crete. He had a really good time. His friends that he was meant to meet up with ditched him. Uh, but he still made the most of it and went on some sightseeing packages and uh, is now back and ready to work on Brian's Hope V1. We're getting research points for this as well, which is really good. There's also a game convention. The big game convention will take place in four weeks' time. Do you want to participate? Sure. This is a small pop-up stand where we can show our marketing material. It isn't very impressive, but a common setup at the G3. It's going to cost 80k, or we could go big. We could spend a lot of money and get a medium booth. I think we should start small and just work our way up. And then we can just have our own convention. We can call it like Hellcon. Uh, which, you know, <laughs> might might be good, I guess. For now, we will go to G3, though, at the cost of 80k and help promote our games. We also need marketing. We still don't have marketing. We spent all this money on additional features for the new engine and stuff, but we haven't unlocked marketing or anything else. Perfect! Your new engine, Brian's Hope V1, is now complete, and we're ready to design more games. We will do that next time. Um, Hellballs continues to be prosperous. We have money. Uh, we have a new employee called Jaden Griffith, and we will be back next time to... Fuck, the convention started already? Jesus Christ. Anyway, we're showcasing Kids Please Dance, which could generate some more hype for the company. Um, currently, a lot of people are visiting the booth. Uh, 45,646 decided to visit. Nice. Um, we didn't make it into the top 100 boosts this year. Once again, uh, we gain more fans. Um, or sorry, once we gain more fans, we might get into the top 100. Anyway, we have 8K fans, which is incredible. Great. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching. Oh, look at the play system is out now as well. Jesus Christ. Um, like I said, thanks for watching and... I'll see you next time.